Hello bakers and welcome to Upside Down. Today we are going to be looking into artist workflow for getting assets inside Unreal Engine 4. We are going to answer a couple of different questions. First one is why these four assets are in different color inside 3ds Max, how we got those assets textured in such way inside Substance Painter and also what was the setup for those assets to look this way inside Unreal Engine. But before getting into today's video, we are going to talk a little bit about the sponsor and this is Core. Core is a game creation platform that lets you create, play and share your games. And everything is happening using the power of Unreal Engine. And did I mention that in the library Core has more than 20,000 games. If you're looking to become a full-time game developer, Core is an awesome place to start. Many creators have been able to turn making games with Core into a full-time job, as well pay their bills and get their dream car. With the help of the Perk program. This is possible because of the monetizations and the revenue sharing. One last thing is that Core at the moment are having a game creator challenge. It's something which if you're interested, I'm also going to put a link down in the description below. The challenge is going to run by 15th of December and there are $13,000 in prizes. You don't need any coding or art experience to actually jump into the platform and start using it. This is because they already have a huge library of thousands of assets, which you can just drag and drop and use straight away. Of course, if you would like to get a little bit more nerdy and create some logics on your own, this can be done by using Lua. One of the great things about Core is that you don't have to go through some of the issues of developing games. Their tools take care of things like multiplayer or as well you can mix match in between already content that was created from other creators. And once your project is done and it's ready for publishing, it can go live right away on their platform. Did I mention the best part that the core platform is actually free? So I really encourage you to go and check it out and start making some awesome games using core. I'm going to put a link down in the description below, which will take you to core's webpage. Now let's jump back into the video of artist workflow for Unreal Engine. So the first part that we talked was about the assets and we are inside 3ds Max and why those assets are in such colors. The reason why I put them into those uh, four colors, it's uh, to understand and see a little bit easier uh, that we have different materials applied to them. And why we want to apply different materials to them is actually something that is going to help us in terms of setup after that inside Substance Painter. If you have assets that uh, have uh, different materials applied, when they go inside Substance Painter, they will be on a different tabs. So each of those assets is going to be in a unique texture set on its own. So uh, we are not going to have any high polys for uh, these assets. They are just low polys with a little bit more uh, detail. And we are after that going to bake inside Substance directly from them. I'm just going to show you how to do that. So to get them inside Substance, what we need to do is either select all of them or just go File, Export and either Export or Export Selected. If we just selected all of them, this is in case you have some other stuff in the scene. And once we have that thing done, we are going to import everything inside Substance and start working on the texturing. Now that we are inside Substance Painter, this is my working file for uh, those assets. You can see first here on the top that we have the four different materials. Each of those materials correspond to one of those assets. So if I click the eye on the side, we are going to just hide it or unhide it. And if I click any of those, you will see that here the layers change a little bit. This is because each of those is now a unique combination of different textures and as well uh, masks and layers that we created specifically for this material and for this asset. This is a very easy way to work when you want to create a set of assets. You're going to have a much better consistency in between them because you can texture one of them like the way that I did it was I started with this one, I created all of those layers so I added a little bit of wood and uh, then I changed some of the values inside of it you can see that uh, I have 
to different types of wood. This is because I wanted the pattern to uh, go in a different direction. And then on top, I masked some of the parts. So for example, this part here, I masked it and use those concrete tiles that uh, I put there. So we change a little bit the type of material. And then on top of all of this, I added steel. This was for all the handles. So this is a very simple material which comes uh, directly inside Substance Painter. You don't have to do anything. And I just changed and tweaked a little bit some of the values inside of it so that it fits uh, a little bit better in the scene. And last thing that I did were three different layers for all my dirt. I usually like to mix and create a couple of different layers for uh, adding dirt. And uh, initially I start with, uh, I'll just hide those two. So uh, as a start, I usually put some base and then here from the tools you can see that uh, we have smart masks i like to apply one of those masks as a base then on top of it i usually put a paint layer and this allows me to go over and for example if i would like to paint a little bit in some of the area uh, a little bit more dirt i can do so or if i would like i can move the slider towards the dark part of uh, this grayscale and uh, remove a little bit of this dirt. So I strongly recommend you when you're texturing assets to uh, put paint layer and go on top of it and just adjust a little bit uh, what was pre-done because uh, it's really easy, especially for artists that uh, already been in the industry and been working for uh, a little bit longer to spot some of the automated uh, things that were done while texturing. And also your assets start looking a little bit more generic if you have uh, everything uh, applied on default. So usually what I do, I uh, apply one of those automated features and I remove a little bit of some of the parts uh, and also add here and there. Uh, I duplicate after that this layer and you can see that for example here this one is a little bit darker and it will uh, it's a little bit more greenish so here we have a brighter one and then one which is a little bit uh, even brighter than the previous one and also I play with the roughness values this uh, not only will give me enough of variation from the dirt but also we have like color we have roughness variation then we have uh, some of the those different type of masks and of course the paints on top so all of this makes uh, a quite a random mixture of uh, elements and this way uh, the people that are seeing your assets won't be able to see any kind of pattern or anything like this. So uh, once this was done, uh, what you can do is just grab all of those and group everything inside one folder. You can, uh, I'll just drag them inside. So uh, you can just close the folder, name it the way that you want. So in my uh, case, I named this and created a smart material called this uh, AH Kitchen Kit. So if you want to create such smart material for your scene, you can just right click and create smart material. This will make uh, something like that or whatever settings you have with all the tweaks and everything that you did inside. Then we move to the other assets. So imagine that those three were not textured. If we go on the second one, and here you can see that I directly drag and dropped this set, which speeded up a lot my whole texturing. So uh, all the elements that we already tweaked and did uh, over here were transferred to this asset. And I just created on top few different uh, materials because here, for example, I wanted to have this uh, marble top and not these concrete tiles. So I remove them and instead of those, uh, I add the marble. And as well, I move the layers for dirt on the very top so that uh, it affects those uh, new parts as well. One thing that uh, I didn't mention was for the baking. So before you start texturing everything, what you need to do is go to texture set settings, then uh, find this small button bake mesh maps. And here uh, you just select uh, output size. I'm using 4K for uh, all the assets. And there is a small checker box over here, which says use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. 
As I told you, we are not going to do high polys for those assets, and what we're using is actually the low poly. So uh, it's important to have this bake. Uh, once you have everything selected, just click the bake settings on the bottom, uh, wait a little bit and everything will be done. But it's important to have this because if you don't bake it, some of the automated masks and some of the automated materials, how they're being calculated inside Substance, are not going to work properly. And for example, if you would like to have some uh, dirt on your edges, it's not going to happen. You need to have first the bake in order for Substance to understand where exactly are the edges of the mesh and everything else. So you need to do this. It's a very important step. Once we are done with uh, our texturing for all the assets, Everything that we need to do is just go to File, Export, Textures, and since we are exporting everything for Unreal, here from the Output Templates, Substance already have Unreal Engine 4 packed. I usually use this one and I'm exporting usually in Targa, this is the TGA format. You can do uh, PNG as well, but uh, I just prefer uh, going for uh, Targa. And the way that uh, things are being packed is we have Diffuse, we have a normal map, and then we have an occlusion, ambient occlusion, roughness and metallic map combined. Now let's go inside Unreal 4 and see what are the setups that we have there. Once we have our textures imported, it will look something like this. And this is our diffuse normal map and the occlusion, roughness and metallic. For the occlusion, roughness and metallic, there is one thing which is very important to do before using it inside your material. When you import this texture, it goes here in the compression settings on default. So what we want to do is move it to mask. This ensures that the values that the software is reading are going to be correct. If you don't do this, uh, your assets will look a little bit like wet, so you're not going to get correct values for your roughness maps. If you move it to mask, everything will be resolved. We just need to save it, close it, and now this texture is ready to be used in our material. Talking about materials, let's have a look about the material setup which I have here for uh, those assets. The material that I have opened at the moment is my master material. So this is something which I usually create. And then from the master material, we create material instances, which we can tweak and we can promote some of the parameters. So uh, we have one slot for our diffuse, for uh, our occlusion, roughness and metallic, and for the normal map. You can see that I have small uh, parameters here on the side, which I connected so that we can tweak some of the settings. So for example, if I would like to tweak our roughness, I have uh, a roughness power, and then we are adding this from the green channel because the green channel is our roughness to the final roughness material attribute. And as well, I have similar thing for uh, ambient occlusion, and for the normal map, uh, we use a flatten normal. So the flatten normal, if the parameter here is on zero, this means that uh, the normal map will look exactly the same way that it looks inside substance. And if we want to flatten it, we can do one. This means that we will kill all the strength of the normal map. So this is something which is nice to have just so that you can tweak some of those parameters. And we are using parameters. This is important part because you can just drag and drop, for example, a texture here. But if you right click and then go to parameters and use those parameters here, for example, texture sample parameter 2D or vector parameter or uh, those uh, scala parameters that we have here, uh, then we will be able to promote them. And when we have a material instance, we can tweak those without changing the master material. This is something which is uh, important and it's something which creates a very nice workflow because you will be able to do a lot of more materials faster and it's more optimized this way. What I have opened at the moment is how the material instance looks like. So you can see that we don't have the whole material graph at the moment available, but we have those checker boxes and here we can switch our textures. And as well, we have our parameters that we promoted. So we have our roughness, normal flatten, and as well, the ambient occlusion. Once we have everything tweaked and set it up the way that we want, we can easily just right click on those, duplicate, come to the next one, change our diffuse, normal, and occlusion, roughness, and metallic map, 
and have the whole thing ready to be used for our assets. Sometimes I like getting a little bit more fancy with the master materials that I made and also I would like to have a little bit more uh, possibilities to tweak different parameters. In that case I usually create something similar to this. So uh, instead of just the few parameters that uh, I promoted in the previous material that we had, uh, here we have a little bit more settings that we can do. So for example you can see that uh, on uh, the ambient occlusion, roughness and metallic, I have a few parameters for uh, my occlusion as well for the metallic and also for the roughness we have a minimum maximum value and as well we have a multiply. Also for uh, the base color or for our diffuse there are a few extra settings like for example the brightness, the contrast and as well we can desaturate it. This is very useful because uh, sometimes you might want to have uh, let's say uh, wood which is going to be more red so you can have a material instance for that wood uh, with these settings and then I can desaturate it and have something which is a little bit more gray so uh, this way we can easily create different type of uh, variations of those assets without the need of us exporting new textures. Also, we have a tint. Uh, this is something that uh, if we don't just want to desaturate it, but for example, we want to make it purple or some other color, we can easily do by adding a little bit of a tint. Also for the normal map, you can see that here, instead of uh, flatten, I'm using a normal map intensity, which has the opposite idea of how the normal map flatten works. So instead of zero being the normal map working as it is by default, it's something which uh, one is the default setting. And this material, I'm going to show you how the master material looks like. As you can see, there's uh, a little bit more things uh, assembled over here, but overall, it's nothing to be afraid and it's nothing that is too complicated. So again, I'm using just simple inputs, simple parameters for our textures as well uh, one for our color and a couple of different parameters which we can multiply, desaturate, power or add into each other and get a final result. So everything is about the opportunities that you would like to create for your material instance and where exactly you would like to tweak everything that uh, you are doing in your scene. So uh, in my case, I usually like to have a little bit more control. So this type of materials are something which uh, is uh, easily created and as well I prefer it uh, just for the end result. If you would like me to do a video on such topic going a little bit more in depth about some of the basic material setups which I'm using, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below what kind of a material would be interesting to see. One last thing that I wanted to say is about the scene that you are seeing on the background. This is something which soon is going to be available and I'll do a few more videos of how exactly it was created, what assets were used and how everything was assembled and as well we are going to have a look inside how the lights were built. The scene is still under development so this is not the final result and there will be more things to come. Before the end of the video let me quickly remind you about Core and to check it from the description down below. Subscribe to the channel, thank you for watching this video and see you next time.